And Richard Esco on the line with us, senior fellow with the Campaign for America's Future, ourfuture.org, and host of the brand new radio show rolling out this weekend, if my uh, inside sources are right. Uh, this is the zerohour.com is the website, the zero hour, the program. Richard, welcome back to the program. Tom, thanks so much for having me back. And and I understand that on TV you're going to be calling yourself RJ. Is that uh... well? You know, for the program, it's shorter than Richard. It fits underneath the logo better. But you know, I I go by either. I'll answer to either. Okay. <laughs> so so tell us about the show. Well, basically, it's a it's a one week, three hour program where we look at all the stuff that uh, yeah I couldn't call it the big picture, for example, because that name was taken. But you know, we look at all the large forces that are uh, affecting the stories in the in the news that week, whether it's uh, economic forces, wealth inequality, whether it's scientific or technological inno- innovations, whether it's climate change and climate related issues. So we really kind of take the broader trends and what's happening in the news. It might be also fashion, culture, um, music, whatever, but we try to put it in a larger context while we talk about it. We have a number of guests every week, everything from uh, religious people to atheists to economists to scientists to engineers are coming up with new products. So we try to keep it fun and fast-moving and talk about what's going on. Why this is zero hour? Well, the show is called The Zero. I, I'll actually tell you how the name came about. I was emailing with the team, trying to come up with a name, couldn't do it. And finally, I said to everybody, come on, guys, this is The Zero Hour. We need a name by close of business today. And then I thought, this is The Zero Hour, meaning uh, this is the moment at which we must make certain decisions and take some actions, or else the future will be irreversibly shaped for the worse. We take action now, it'll be shaped for the better. If we fail to, things will be shaped for the worse. In climate change, in the oligarchical wealth, increasing wealth inequality, I'm not saying all is lost if we don't act now, but it's a very important time. It's a time to take action, and so I thought that would make a good name for the show. Yeah, well, I think, you know, all could be lost if we don't act now. It's, it's, uh, it, it is a, a zero hour. I'm curious. You're, you know, I've, I've been, and in fact, you're going to be on our on our TV show tonight talking about uh, about this and also about Thomas Piketty's new book, uh, Capital, right. and uh, how it's such a hit. What, and and you know, my book, The Crash of 2016, which covers a lot of these areas, and there's a, there's a, there's a, a raft of these books out right now that are talking about how uh, economics, politics, and the billionaire culture have. Uh, and, and 33 years of Reaganomics, have all converged to uh, create a crisis in both capitalism and democracy, and you know, with varied suggestions about how to get out of them, but basically this consensus that, that the system, that, you know, we can't make it here anymore, as uh, Barry McMurtry, was it, says? Uh, and, it was his son, James. James McMurtry, yeah, you're right, thank you. So, uh, you know, your thoughts on this? Well, I think that's exactly right. I think that what we're seeing now is that the crisis of democracy, as, a, as represented in Citizens United, the McCutcheon decision, money in politics, and the crisis of an unequal economy, an economy so plagued with inequality, the enormously wealthy few and the struggling many, that it's going to have trouble surviving. They're, they're one problem. They're two sides, sides of the same coin, which is when power and wealth... Is, and the founding fathers knew this, as you know well. Uh, when, when power and wealth are over-accumulated, democracy and the well-being of the overall population is threatened. And I think what we're seeing now, because we have a global economy as opposed to simply a national economy, is that that problem is multiplied even more from what the founding fathers saw. And we really are at a point where it feels like a black hole, you know, where, where it reaches a, a, a size that it, its expansion and its eventual collapse becomes irreversible. We're teetering at the edge of, of an enormous accumulation. We already have an enormous accumulation of wealth and power. And if it goes a much further, democracy and the kind of economy we were used to in the 50s, 60s, and 70s will collapse in upon themselves, and certainly the 50s and 60s will collapse, and it will be very, very tough to get them back. Yeah. 
In his new book, John Paul Stevens says, in Buckley, the Court of Appeals for the District of Columbia had upheld the statutory limitations on both contributions and expenditures, reasoning that they were regulations of conduct rather than speech. Now, in Citizens United, obviously, the court has disagreed. Uh, your thoughts in the 30 seconds we have left? Well, I guess all I can say in 30 seconds is I think it's ironic that this school of judicial thought thinks that there is a form of speech which is allowed, first of all, to exercise itself in secret, although they're claiming transparency, and secondly, which not everyone is free to do. Yeah, and I find it amazing that from George Washington until the 70s, and even in, the, even, even in Buckley, arguably, that speech, that regulating uh, financial expenditures was considered, quote, regulations of conduct. And now they're saying, the, you know, putting money into political campaigns is speech. It's bizarre. R.J. Eskow, the uh, OurFuture.org, of course, but this is the TheZeroHour.com. Check it out. Good luck, R.J. Thanks, Tom. Good talk.